everyone, how you guys doing? Uh, Deck Deggy here. Apologies, I'm a little sick right now. So, uh, this is going to be a review video of Avatar The Last Airbender, the live action Netflix series. And I'm going to be blunt and honest with you guys about this. So, this is not going to be a recap. I'm going to be breaking down the most important details uh, about this story. Uh, and also, what things that, well, technically were outlandish and a mistake. Alright, so I'm going to be brutal and honest with you guys about this. Okay, completely, there's eight episodes that has consisted of it. So now, in the animated series, uh, all total, it lasted about like 15 to 20 minutes. So, they compelled all of chapter... One water all together into eight episodes. So just imagine, I believe there's like 20 to 30 episodes in the anime series, and they just combine it all together. Didn't really make sense that much to me, only a little bit. They have new showrunners. I don't know what happened to Brian Matthew. Uh, they built on the project when, like, they're scouting out different locations. The main creators of after the last airbender and made series so let's talk about ang ang uh by gordon uh i say he was all right uh being the avatar as ang i'll give him props he was more better than the <laughs> movie the movie sucked ass big time i'm pretty sure we all already know that i appreciate the uh, bending what they did with the vfx and special effects fx and stuff amazing spectacular and also they added some martial arts into it implementing it which i do really like the thing is that um i'm going to talk about the problems of it as well so i would say that the first portion first part of it was something that i didn't actually even like i can't even fathom any words i'm like i was real shocked okay so Far Lord Sozin, was it Sozin? Yeah, Far Lord Sozin, he declared that there's a comment that was going to basically uh, make all firebenders super powerful, but he wanted the Fire Nation to rule the world, basically. So he chose to take out the Air Nomads first, and they were actually very powerful when they took out the Air Nomads. That's where Aang found out he was an avatar, then he wanted to run away, and then Fire Nation attacked him. They killed them. It showed literally how they killed them. They burnt them to the crisp, all the monks and stuff. I was actually surprised that it's like Nickelodeon was actually uh, in partnership with it. Like you literally got to see like some killing, some deaths and stuff. I was like, damn. Okay, so let's just say that sometimes when the monks couldn't really use their airbending, they sure could use their bow staffs and monks, well... They're not really easy to take down because Shallow Monks, uh, you don't mess with them. But the only reason why the Firebenders, Fire Nation was able to overcome them was because their power um, was even more far greater than theirs. That is why and how they're able to wipe out the Air Nation, the Air Nomads, basically. So that's what happened right there. It caught me off guard right there. Aang, Aang is... Well, let's just say that he's really special and he's more talented than all the other airbenders for fact and matters. He was like 100 feet in the air and stuff and he was just jumping from little cliff to cliff and stuff and doing all these flips. And you can see all these other airbenders that are his age that are like beginning to, uh, let's say, cope and trying to learn how to use their airbending powers and stuff so he's a little show off too um if you're a little that powerful that great then that means you're special and they always did say you were special okay so now that the air nomads are gone it was just like the anime series when he ran away to the ocean he fell in the ocean and he basically turned him and appa into a glacier of ice Hundred years pass, and exact same thing happened with Katar and Sokka. How they stumble across Aang, basically. We didn't see Appa. First off, we didn't see Appa. We only just saw Aang. 
He didn't say, will you go penguin sweats? Penguin sledding with me? No, he didn't say that. So, basically, he was knocked out cold. They took him back to his village, to the Southern Water Tribe village, and Sokka, yeah, uh, the one who played soccer, Ian Owsley, Owsley, apologies. Ian plays soccer real good. He know the spot. If you guys don't know, soccer does get all the ladies. I'm dead serious. If you think about it, he does get the ladies. He's the ladies guy and stuff. Even though he's only a warrior and stuff. Anyways, the whole thing actually panned out similar to the way how, like, Basically, the first anime episode was like, and we got to see Dallas Lou, Dallas Lou, and Uncle Iroh, uh, Paul Sun Hung Yu, Hung Lee. We got to see uh, Father Ozai later on in the seasons. So Dallas, a fellow martial artist, which I could appreciate. Before I saw this whole series, he sat down with Dante Bosco. Dante Bosco is the Zuko from the anime series. He plays the voice actor of Zuko. He has an iconic voice, and let me tell you, Dallas, he emulated that, and with the fighting style, he fought just like Zuko did in the animated TV show. Like, spot on, perfectly. Also, not to mention the Blue Spirit, I'll get into that in a moment's notice. That was my favorite episode during the whole uh, animated series of Avatar The Last Airbender. True story about that. Okay, so I'm gonna get into the live action version of that in soon. Let me talk about this first off. So their fights, their first encounter, did pan out the way how I expected. And yeah, Sokka did get his ass kicked and Aang sacrificed him. So he said, if I go with you, will you leave these people alone? Zuko said, all right. Because if you guys don't know, Zuko is actually sentimental and stuff. If you think about it, Aang said that he'll go willingly with you uh, if you leave these people alone. Zuko is the same as Aang. Like, uh, they both kind of have the same singular mind. Like, uh, well, Zuko is full of, like, hatred and wrath. But he does have a peaceful side to him as well. And he does feel people's others like problems and he burdens their problems onto his shoulders that's why he's like pissed off all the time and stuff and he loves doing what he does helping out people and stuff but he wanted to do the Agni Kai he thought he was going to face off with the lieutenant but no his father said you're facing off with me because that was actually my plan and you don't like my plan so we're going to face off he didn't want to fight him. In the anime series, he stood down. He didn't fight him. But in this live action series, he was only using, like, defense, basically. He wasn't doing the offense. He had his father. He had his father close. He was about to punch his father right there in his eye. He had the chance to, uh, like, he had a ball of fire fist and stuff. But he showed mercy. He didn't do it. And his father just burnt him Give him a bad eye. I believe it was this side. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Kind of forgot which side it was. Anyways, other than that. Uh, his, it was kind of weird. It was like his father was like favoring him over Azula at this time. I'm talking about the important parts. And it's like kind of weird. He kept on high mighty Zuko like, I saw what you did. You could have struck me, but you held back. You think showing mercy would appease me, abide me to your terms, or give me sympathy for you? But his father was cold, but Zuko, well, let's just say that Zuko is super powerful, and he's actually a real badass. Okay, now let's talk about Katara. Katara is, well, she actually learned waterbending. She taught herself, actually. She had a waterbend scroll as well. When they rescued, uh, I guess you could say, Aang from Zuko, Zuko ship, they needed to travel back to the Air Temple. I believe it was the Northern Air Temple. They traveled back there. Aang witnessed and saw the destruction, whatever. It was just like this TV series, basically. It was going on. 
But I didn't like the fact that it was too much dialogue, especially when they went to Omashu. Omashu was a problem. Let me tell you about Omashu. Omashu was mixed. It had firebenders that lived among the earthbenders. In King Bumi, King Bumi, um, like, Basically, in the anime series, he was surprised to see Aang, and he really did like Aang, and he missed Aang. King Bumi act like a dick to Aang. Basically, he said that you're gone for a hundred years, you, like, disappeared. He's, like, all mad at Aang and stuff, even though uh, when they 1v1 each other and faced off, it was basically, like, a draw. Sokka had to, like, bud in and stop in. Uh, that's when... Uh, Chao came in, uh, Commander Zhao. Commander Zhao, well, it, uh, he was actually promoted courtesy of Azula. Azula kept on whispering inside her father's ears, maybe you should do this, maybe you should do that. Uh, he was belittling Azula too at the same time. Well, I mean belittling, it was like he was still favoring Zuko more than Azula. I'm thinking in the anime series, that's the opposite, he actually favored Azula than Zuko, which was really confusing at that time. But yet do we know that Azula was pulling the strings behind the scenes. It was all her. She exposed Zuko. And basically, I'm again to what Commander Zhao said to Zuko in their final fight. <clears throat> I'll get into that soon in a moment's notice. Okay, so Bumi, like, their draw, they had a fight, it was a draw and stuff, and, well, let's just say that, uh, they met, uh, Suki and the Key Ocean Warriors. Zuko and Joe had to team up, they had to team up, and, well, technically, did they team up? They got a location on where the Avatar was at, and Aang was astraught, he didn't know how to use his powers, Avatar stay, Avatar Kiyoshi, Basically taught him, well, technically not teach him, gave him her power. Well, technically, he uh, she became his vessel, and we saw Avatar Kiyoshi in action, which was pretty darn awesome and sick of her. I like it. Okay, so they took out Commander Zhao and also Zuko. Well, technically, Zuko was searching for Aang at that time. They had a retreat. Meanwhile, basically, Commander Zhao eventually hired some archers. He hired some archers courtesy of Azula. No one knew about that. No one knew he was promoted by Azula either. Okay, so, <clears throat> Blue Spirit. It was actually the events, like the fighting events and how to break in, sneak in, was like exactly the same basically as how he was uh Chun free Aang in the animated series so yeah that had to be my best one zuko is not only a martial artist or like an amazing firebender he's also a skilled swordsman uh how he was outed by being the blue spirit was because azula told uh commander Zhao that yeah my brother is actually uh the swordsman because, well, she has a big mouth and she was plotting all along. She wanted to be in the front reins and not to capture the avatar necessary. She wanted to prove to her father that she was always better than Zuko and she should be out there, like, hunting and capturing and ruling uh, different nations and different villages, capitals, you name it. That was her main agenda. She was. Uh, facing off with other benders in her training, and Fire Lord Ozai was, like, pushing her to her limits and stuff until she knew she was ready. He knew she was ready. Now, we saw Mei and Tai Li early. Why would we see Mei and Tai Li early? Like, it doesn't really make any sense. We see them, I believe, in Chapter 2, Earth. But we saw them early. Azula... May and Tai Li did not look like their age. They did not look like they're 15 years old at all. Yeah, at this point in time, uh, they're 15 years old. Dallas plays role as Zuko. He looked like he was 15 years old at this time. But the others, they look like they're like 13 year olds and they're like a little more shorter and stuff. I was confused about the fact matters. 
All right. Now let's fast forward all the way up to the Northern Water Tribe. Paku didn't even want to teach Aang how to water bend, because he obviously thought that since he's the Avatar, he should have already been known all the elements. Aang was like, no, I was looking forward to you being my teacher. And Paku just walked away and said, the Avatar needs to learn this on his own. I was like, okay, that was a dick move of him. And Katara won the fights, and he said, no, go to the healing huts with the woman. And she was questioning him, why can't I fight? He said, women do not fight here at the Northern Water Temple. They must do things differently at the Southern Water Temple. Okay. So, let's dive into this a little bit more deep in detail. He tried to go to um, Ruko, Avatar Ruko, I forgot his name, the water bending Avatar. Basically, uh, I guess you could say he didn't even want to help. He kept on staying in the Avatar state, and he basically abandoned the northern uh, village. He abandoned them because he wanted to go into the spirit world more often. So that's what happened. And also, not to mention, uh, we get the Princess. Princess Yue. Now, Princess Yue, basically, she broke off the marriage uh, with... Uh, I forget his name, but she broke off the marriage, and he was fine with it. He was cool with it. Him and Sokka, they didn't get in a fight or anything like that. They were actually preparing against war, and so they were actually pretty cool, but Princess Yue caught feelings for Sokka, obviously. Coming to jail, tried to kill um, Zuko, but failed. In a belief failed, we already know that. So he snuck on to uh, Coming to jail's boats, and... Found out that they're heading to the Northern Water Tribe to take it over, basically. Commander Joe wanted Iroh to be his second in command, basically. But he wanted more than that. He wanted to be Fire Lord. I was like, whoa, where did this come from? Azula has been sending him letters that are, like, totally out of this world. And uh, she was messing with them, toying with them all and stuff. Posing as her father as well. Other than that, when they made it to the uh, water temple, same thing just happened basically. Uh, Katara, she fought Bato. No, not Bato, sorry. She fought Paku. Exact same fight like the anime series. I gotta admit, that was pretty epic and awesome. But he didn't know that. Well, it didn't reveal that basically he saw her necklace and he was like, oh, I knew your grand grand. That didn't happen right there. I guess they cut that part out. Now, the thing is that eventually when the Fire Nation attacked, uh, Katara was able to uh, convince him. Come on, let the woman fight. And he was like, fine, we'll let the woman fight. You, could, you guys just guard the gates, basically. So yeah, Katara was able to fight. In the Oasis, uh... Commander Joe and Iroh were there, and also Sokka and Yue. What happened was that um, Commander Joe, he came up with the plan to destroy the Moon Spirit. He destroyed the Moon Spirit, and got pissed off, went to the Avatar State. Iroh did warn him. He said, if you mess with the Moon Spirit, if you kill it, I will release hell upon you. And Iroh did, but Commander Joe just ran his little ass out of there and stuff. He wanted to leave. Until, uh, okay, there's a fight with Katara and Zuko. I'm glad they kept this iconic line in. You little peasant. You found a master. I love that part right there. So there, uh, Zuko was able to necessarily kind of defeat her a little bit. Which happened long in, and not to mention that it's when Commander Joe and Zuko... Finally face off each other. He said, I thought you were dead. He said, no, you're going to have to kill me. <laughs> kill me, like, next time, like, try your best, basically. They fought, and Dallas fought just like Zuko did in the animated series. And they even had hand-to-hand -hand contact in it, which I do love and appreciate it, which was pretty dope and awesome and interesting. He finally revealed to Zuko, Zuko could have killed him, too. But I... I'm going to stop right there. He finally admitted and told uh, Zuko that 
this mission you're doing, trying to capture the Avatar, it's all a fluke. Your father doesn't even care. He doesn't care you're on a fluke mission, basically. The advantage you was sending you away, because you're just a problem, and you needed to go away. Azula was the one who outed you with the swordsman. She knew that they were your swords. Azula was the one who promoted me. Azula was the one who convinced me to hire these archers. She's the one who's been behind your demise all this time. And he let um, Commander Zhao go, but Commander Zhao tried to attack Zuka again. But Uncle Arrow, ooh, obliterated him, killed him. Other than that, both of them decided, like, yeah, we got to get out there. We got to leave and stuff. Yui sacrificed her life to restore the Moon Spirit's life. And, yeah, she disappeared. And let's just say that it's... Everything went back to a normal after Aang, like, destroyed the navy of the Fire Nation, and, yeah, when he was in the Avatar state. So, that was pretty epic and awesome seeing that fight. Other than that, what I believe is going to happen now is that, let's just say that Azula and Ozai, that wasn't their plan all along. It was a distraction. Trying to attack and take over the northern uh, water temple. Yeah, water niche. That wasn't their plan at all. It was a diversion. Their main plan was to get Omashu and to get King Bumi on his knees and in cuffs, which they did. And who was there that did it? Azula. Yeah, Azula took over Omashu. Which was actually supposed to be Mei. Mei was actually supposed to be one who took over Omashu. But no, it's what Azula did at the ending. And I guess that's about it. We're going to see Aang learn waterbending. Eventually, uh, in book two, it'll be much better. Because I would get this uh, first chapter. Since it consists of eight episodes, a six out of ten. Because this really did disappoint me. Uh, even though it took them years in the making for this, it really did just irk me and just kind of really piss me off a little bit to how they presented most of the characters and how well they didn't work out. My favorite character will always be Zuko no matter what. Zealous did an amazing job at it and stuff. Other than that, uh, what do you guys think about this? Uh, you guys tell me, did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Did it suck? And then I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys are new, subscribe to the channel as always. And yes, of course, I'll see you all in the next one.